be aware of what you say. Yeah, that's Bro, so cool. Bond. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> How are you? I'm okay. I'm uh, still around. It's been a while since we chatted. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay too. <laughs> so, uh, what what happened with the stinky van? Oh, stinky van destroyed me. <laughs> I can't believe that I I counseled you to to get stinky van. I think stinky van almost killed me. I think I almost died from stinky van because really? the brakes didn't work. So I would drive and I'd put my foot on the brake. They would start burning. And then the exhaust had a giant hole in it, and then like all the muffler fumes would come out the sides. So then <laughs> I would be smelling the exhaust, hearing the muffler, and then smelling burning brakes. And then the windows took 30 minutes to roll up and down. So I was just being hot, and then the whole thing was covered in mold. So I was being like hot boxed with like black mold and burning brakes, exhaust fumes, and all this stuff. And I it just and also I mean highway fumes too, <laughs> everything in between. <laughs> so I saw all my crypto i told i sold all my bitcoin so i could buy the stinky van and <laughs> but bitcoin's down now so i mean maybe it was a good maybe it was a good loss <laughs> and then uh, i spent a week trying to get parts for it and then my uncle spent a week working on it he pretty much hurt his back so he couldn't even walk and it, we realized the whole thing was rusted and then we tried to work on the brakes and the brakes were so rusted that they actually crumbled in our hands <laughs> So I started calling it the death trap and that it, if anyone wanted it, they probably had a death wish. And then this guy came in the middle of the night and said that his wife got in a head on collision and that he was looking for a new family vehicle. And he just handed me a wad of cash and he left. And I was like, I told you I was wrong with it. So morally, this feels wrong, but you've made your own decision. And then it was gone. Well, how much did you get for it? I got 650 or 640 to be exact, because apparently he couldn't get another plan at the bank machine. <laughs> <laughs> I guess when you asked me to buy a stinky van or keep the car that was running perfectly, I feel bad. It's not often I get asked for any type of uh, advice about anything. Well, I think that was my own thing, though, because I think I probably had like 10 people call me and be like, you should not buy that fucking van. And well, I was like, I'm going right now. I <laughs> just got a thing. Sold my crypto. <laughs> See you in 10. Like, <laughs> I'm like no I think that I think that's a really bad idea I think you should keep your vehicle and I'm like ah, but, yeah. but Captain Sweeps that gave me the green light just pass, pass that no, I mean, what was I supposed to do I mean you get 10 no's and you get one yes so may as well go with that one because he's he's know so much about so much <laughs> ay, ay, ay. wow I, and I got a new vehicle and I, I love my new vehicle. I love it so much. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it? it's a Volkswagen Golf. Um, right. The seats go back and it's really good on gas and I can sleep on it, sleep in it. And it's it's just phenomenal. It's so cute. I have like little blankets and like crochet knit sweaters all over it. And like, it's just the whole thing is just so colorful and so bright. And I've, I've driven almost 2000 kilometers within the last week. And I just, I've been just ripping around. It's been really fun. Wow. Yeah. Is it a standard or automatic? It's automatic. Oh, nice. I became a delivery driver for a bit and I was I was driving around with it and delivering stuff and uh, I realized I hated it and the whole thing. 2,000 kilometers in a week. Was that delivering or you went somewhere? Uh, I've been all around the island. Really? I just got back from Duncan today and then yesterday I was in Lake Cowichan and then I was in Salam or whatever it's called, the Salt Lamb. And then I was up in Nanaimo and back a couple times, probably like wow. three times. And now I'm back in Victoria today and then going back to Duncan in three days and then going back to Nanaimo after. Wow. Yeah. What are you, what are you doing in these places? Well, um, in, in Nanaimo, I was visiting my family. So I had a nice time visiting my grandparents and my parents and then my friends were throwing a birthday party, so I went down and we had camp for a couple nights at the river, and that was really lovely. And then I was just carpooling and ride sharing with people that needed rides, and then dropping everyone around town. And then um, Nigel was needing 
a ride. He was selling he was selling his car, and so he needed uh, me to drive him to Souk, um, so he could drop his car off. And so I drove him to Souk and then back because he's staying in Duncan right now, and then back there. And then um, yeah, Lake Houchen was for the convoy up to Ferry Creek, and then um, yeah, just just back and forth, back and forth. And now I'm here, and I was trying to sublet my room. And so I gotta clean the shit out of my room today because it's gnarly and no one's gonna give me money for it. And I can't, I have a dollar in my bank account. So I don't know how I'm gonna do it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So you, you got someone to sublet it or what? Well, Lindsay was gonna sublet it. Lindsay. So I was really pumped and I was like, what? this is great. Uh, so I came home today and I was talking to my roommate about it and he had to go to work. And then Lindsay sent me a message saying that she's actually gonna stay at her place. So she doesn't need a place. But now I'm on a mission to not pay rent because I have a dollar. Uh, a dollar, perhaps. <laughs> when, when do you next get money in? I don't know. I don't have a job. I quit, I quit it. <laughs> I was thinking about selling my used socks on the dark web. Some, yeah, but I mean, I know you, you have secret agent powers that you could, you could live for the next six months with no money. I know. I, I mean, as long as I don't have... As long as I don't have my room, then I'm 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 so golden. If yeah. I don't have to pay rent, I I can I'm living luxury. Like I'm living good. I've been I've pretty much slept in my car for the last week, and it's 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 fun. I like it. It's a disaster yeah. right now, but it's it's free. It's mine. <laughs> oh, for sure. So what's <laughs> happening up? At, you're going up to uh, Ferry Creek. What's happening there? So I I went to Couch, and yesterday there was a 7 a.m. convoy. Um, go to because the police were doing um blocking the road to Kekus, which is technically illegal because it's it's not really their land or any place where they can do stops or arrests or block the road legally uh -huh. so they were out of their jurisdiction so there's a large group of people that went to lake Cabochin that were going to protest the police for doing what they were doing because what they were doing was illegal and they were trying to stop people that were doing something in their minds illegal so it was a protest over a protest over a protest nice. uh, and they got around 200 people to head up to Kekus and there was nice. around 70 vehicles that wow. went in the convoy 200 because that's there was a lot of cops up there i saw in the, in the video mm -hmm. so the numbers are growing that's good 200 yeah. people that's that's huge yeah i went up there at 7 a.m i got up at six drove down to the couch and and then I realized I had a really bad eye infection and I scratched my cornea and those were on like hundreds and hundreds of nerves in your eyes. And I was just, I was in such a bad mood. I, so when I was in the lineup in Tim Hortons and this protester was like, how are you? And I was like, I have an eye infection and it really hurts. And then I just left in the bathroom and then I drove off and I never came back. <laughs> you told them. I guess so. I was such a brat. And then they were all leaving and I was like, are you guys leaving? Cause I had to go get gas and it'd be really nice if you stayed, um, but you have to do what you have to do. It'd be cool if we could convoy together, but I have to get gas. <laughs> and then I was like, you need to I, all should people. Be, I should not be awake right now. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> Wait, you were holding up all, everybody? No, there was just a small convoy that was there after the big convoy left. Oh. And I was I wanted to drive up with them, but I was in too much pain. So I'm thinking about growing up on Thursday or Friday. I don't know. I've been wearing these glasses and they make me feel like, like they make me feel such an idiot. <laughs> How come you don't have plenty of burning glasses? I don't know. I have another pair of glasses, but they're they're worse. They're just giant circles. They make me they make me look like I don't know. These are Nigels as well. <laughs> oh, you gotta get these. I have a pair like that. I'll grab them. I think they're in the bathroom. I'll do a glass, glass show off. Never mind, turns out I don't know where any of my things are. <laughs> Time to move out. <laughs> <laughs>
How have you been? I've been very uh, sedate. Sedate? I'm meditating like two, three hours a day, and it takes me about an hour to recover from it. And they, I, just running out of all desire, interest, anything. I've, I've turned into a the uncarved block. I think that can be good, though. Oh, yeah? No, I think we're all trying to get to a place where we're like present and calm and desireless and just there. I've been watching a lot of TikTok too. Oh I, yeah, that's good. I, God, there's a lot of talented people. Like it's way, I know. way better than Facebook. It's such it's such a it's such a good platform, and it's it's so good because they're like 15 seconds long. So if you have a bad attention span like me, you just you just rip it. Hours go by, and you don't really have to. It's just, it's just a fun little show, and you you just see lots of these cute cute animal videos, and like people doing really cool stuff, really cool art, really cool projects. It makes me want to be a better person. I feel yeah. so inspired after I go on it. It's insane. I'm gonna start to teach the inflow matrix on TikTok. Perfect. Make it go viral. <laughs> it's intimidating. Like there's people there. What the lowest is hundreds of thousands, and millions of people watching them. They're doing these incredible things. They're very good looking, right? They got something going on. And then I look at mine, and it's just like two views and a one follower. And so I mean, that's that's where they all started. <laughs> I know, but you don't see many old people on there. And if they are, they look fucking insane doing something insane. Well, I mean, what you're doing is remotely insane. Do what? What you do is remotely insane. So. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, an inflow matrix. I mean, I don't know. I know, like, I don't see anyone talking about word lenses, conceptual maps, that kind of shit. Like, nobody. Huh. So I, can, I can corner the market on it. There you go. <laughs> Don't let it flop, kids. <laughs> I like it. you're always enthusiastic, no matter how bad the idea. <laughs> yeah, it's, but it can be bad for advice. Compared to your, it's like, I mean, I between you and Miss Plum, it's just constant chaos. It's just uh, it's so bad. It's so bad. You know, my car. I was thinking today when I was driving this car that I just I just raved about. I was driving and, and last time I was driving out of Victoria, someone middle fingered me and they were screaming at me in their giant truck because I was in the fast lane. Um, but my car wouldn't speed up because my muffler has a giant crack in it. So when I go really fast, it starts rattling and the whole ground vibrates. And I was I was thinking about how a normal person would see me in my car just going slow in the fast lane. And then I see me with my check engine light on, my e-brake light on, which isn't supposed to be on because my e-brake is off, my muffler rattling, and then like my sunroof that keeps going crazy and things coming in it. And then like this music that's blaring and then me like really confused sitting with my car trying to get it not to like vibrate on it. And so my muffler doesn't fall off and then i was like you know a normal person is just driving their car like you know <laughs> for me that's just that's just a casual ride like, <laughs> does anyone ever want to film you as you're doing your thing kind of thing like you need, I mean, a, ca you need a cameraman i think it'd be so bad though well you think so but other people get a lot of a big kick out of someone else going through hell Right? I mean, your, your hell is a show. I just stayed for a couple of days at a place that I had to pee in a bucket. And like every time I had to go, I just kind of squat in a bucket because I didn't want to go outside. <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Cool. I don't want camera crew to see my disasters. <laughs> just me in a bucket with, with a scratched cornea. <laughs> have, you, have you come in contact with Kyle now? He wanted to hang out yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. What's he doing? Uh, he said that he was hanging out at Beacon Hill with Jorge. Oh. Mm. That's it? I expect him to be at Fay Creek right now, but I don't know. Is he allowed back in? He went back in. He did? Yeah, they posted a picture of him and it was like, Kyle's back. Um, no funny stuff this time. And it was him wearing a jester hat. <laughs> no funny stuff, buddy. <laughs> That's funny. No funny stuff. Yeah, that's someone that's more chaotic than me, in a sense. I just think he and Tree should be the front people at the front lines talking. You know, are they talking to the cops? Like, do you have a, a rule saying don't talk to the cops? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. So the Arresti isn't, so they have one Arresti for, for five Arresti supports. And so the Arresti supports kind of handle like who, who, what number and lawyer you're going to call when you're in jail and who gets your car keys and who gets your stuff. And then uh, you, they come and talk to the police and like everything's kind of handled for you. The only thing you really have to do is put on a show to buy them enough time. Like people were like locking themselves to change and chains on the bridge and like locking themselves through with bike lock. They were talking about locking themselves around the neck with bike locks through a vehicle yeah. and putting it in the middle of the road. And I think it was some other arrest happened where some guy like his hand was in like this sand pit or something and he was like strapped to a tree. So I think and then when you get arrested, they just want you to say nothing and go limp. Yeah. So I think, yeah, they, they got a really good game plan going on. <laughs> I could just see there's like a hundred of these all tied with some sort of lock to some device anywhere. And the cops are just driving and all they see are these hippies just locked somewhere. <laughs> and then there's a hippie training camp where they teach them the locks. They teach them, you know, how to make it more irritating and how to, how to smell your body and how to make it just horrible for the police to do anything. Well, I was actually pretty upset because I really wanted to get arrested in a clown costume wearing fairy wings. But nice. I woke up that morning to go get arrested and I had a cornea, a, a cut on my cornea and Nigel was detoxing from fentanyl. I remember just sitting in the car at Tim Horton in the parking lot and like I was crying because I couldn't see and he was sitting there shaking and I was like, maybe today's not the day. <laughs> that's, that's bringing some wisdom in. <laughs> So when are you gonna get arrested this weekend? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, um, I don't know. Serena and David and a big convoy, kind of collective convoy, are going up this weekend. Uh huh. Um, and I talked to Nigel about maybe going up this weekend as well. So I think the weekend might might be it. Might be it. I don't know. I mean, everyone talks about getting arrested. But then when it comes down to it, you're like, I don't know, I'm scared. Like, <laughs> you know, let's go get arrested. And, and then someone on the group chat posted the the pieces of paper that you have to sign yeah. uh, if you want to get released. And it said something about your passport and how you have to drop off your passport. And I had this kind of like shock and I was like, I don't know if I want to get arrested anymore. Cause like, what if I get in trouble? Um, but I'm probably not going to be able to travel anyways because I'm not going to get vaccinated. So I don't know. I got to cut my losses, I guess. <laughs> what are the vaccinated protocols up there? Do they have, are they hacked? Are they trying to get people to get vaxxed? At the blockade? Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think, I don't know. I don't know. Like they're still wearing know. masks, aren't they? Yeah, they're wearing masks because if they don't wear masks and they don't take their social distancing, then they get shut down. They um, shut by... down anyway. What? <laughs> they get shut down anyway. Yeah, but they can get extra shut down. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they're trying to get anyone vaccinated. I think, I, you know, a lot of people are saying, you know, get vaccinated in your own terms. I'm sure they have lots of anti-vaxxers and vaxxers. I don't know. I saw them all standing on the bridge with their masks and like people with like crazy outfits and some dude sitting in a tree playing guitar. So like, I don't think everyone's getting vaccinated. They were singing like, no, Jack, like, you know, that. like some rainbow songs and a bunch of other stuff. Like, I, there's light in me, so he's light in you. And there was like the cops on the bridge. And they're just all like, <laughs> and I look in your eyes. <laughs> And I see the trees, and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't think they're trying to force anyone anything. I think there's a place for everyone. Hopefully, I don't know. <laughs> and if they try to kick anyone out this time, I mean, they can just boot it with the cops. See you over there. Get arrested. We need you now, Kyle. Hey, I don't like how you said that. We need you more than ever for this organization. Can you please just go, you know, staple yourself to that log for a couple hours? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Are you thinking about going out? No. You should pick a lawn chair. <laughs> I know. It's, it's my turn. <laughs> Let's get him. He's not moving. 
So you did remember that story, you beastly person. <laughs> I was, Nigel was asking me, like, um, what it, if I knew any information about um, the arrest because we were heading up there. And I was like, I don't know. But I think, like, you know, Elijah got arrested twice at the Elphinstone camp in a lawn chair. So that's like, I think we got to do something a little special. <laughs> can't, can't get them off that one. <laughs> I have a little more time. <laughs> no lawn chairs allowed. Not allowed. No lawn chairs. Get rid of the big guy. Well, I know it's just, it's, it's, you know, this guy pulled my leg. This guy went up there and then he said, Hey, sweet. Everyone up there was asking about you and they're wondering when you're coming up to take over. <laughs> no, that's for, what about, for about 15 seconds, I believed him. For, for 15 seconds, I was, Jesus, it's about time. Okay, I'm, I'm. <laughs> That was me with the van, but it, I think it lasted two weeks. <laughs> and then, then I finally, it had been so long since someone had pulled my leg like that. But I just couldn't believe that he had a sense of humor. I didn't know him that well. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't really know him that well. And, and then I was just in this, oh my God, he, he went into my deepest heart and found out exactly what was there. And he took it out, put it in front of me and went, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> so then you're like where's the fucking lawn chair <laughs> my car's not working very well someone's gotta bring me out of here <laughs> that guy's humor sucks i can't be around him anymore but this is being the woods no internet and this guy like <laughs> okay everyone uh sweep we we want to use the synergizer for what well we have to we everyone wants you kicked out again and we, we want to use your table to do it <laughs> You know what you should do? You should go to Fairy Creek and, you know, where they're doing the blockade, you know, where they're stopping the cops. You should just, you know, go, go like a couple of feet aside from their sign and everything like that and just sit on the road with a bunch of lawn chairs and bring out a fucking synergizer. And when the cops come to arrest everyone, you'd be away from the gates and right. then you'd just be like, hey, how's it going? Do you guys want to do a synergizer? <laughs> and they're like, excuse me, mister, um, your, your, your instruction of this blockade and just be like, oh, I don't know. I thought it was just public land and I just brought my board game out. I saw a lot of people were driving up this way and I don't know, I thought someone might be interested. And then just just sit there, you just don't move, just keep asking them to play a synergizer. <laughs> <laughs> I did that at Occupy. We took over a bank and I brought out the synergizer and I had people sitting down and everyone was kicked out. The cops said we had to go and I said, no, we're doing a synergizer. <laughs> well, actually I said, it's a workshop. We're doing a workshop on Conscious communication with the police. Thank you for showing up and we'll be back <laughs> to you later, okay? Would you like to join? <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, no, I mean, I would definitely do that if I was there. I, I, I know where the trouble is and I know how to get into it almost yeah. immediately. Usually wherever I go is, is where I shouldn't be. Me too. And then, you know, everything there tries to get me away. Well, you know, I've been realizing that with my life in the last couple of weeks. I don't know what's going on, but it's just been this series of really wrong events. <laughs> and I'm like, what? what is this universally trying to tell me? But instead, I just ignore it and wait for it to go away, and I don't change anything. You know what it is? <laughs> you are missing planetary gardens. Well, I don't know. What, what, what role is there for me in planetary <coughs> gardens? Like, what am I missing? What's happening? Well, you're one of the only members, so that could be it. But right now, I, I think it's uh, four or five. I think there might be three, maybe. No, maybe four. Maybe me, you, Lara, and Kyle, and Jorge. Bye. All right. That's a, that's a good team. It's a great team, except Lara good. and Kyle aren't sort of getting along. Who? Lara? Yeah, Lara is. She doesn't like Kyle, right? Well, that's fair. I, I don't know if I really like like Kyle after what he did to her. I know. I mean, I had to I had to diss him. I had to cut contact. But I don't understand. I cut contact with him, Shambu, and all of you guys. Except you. You're the only person I didn't cut contact. I just clean sweep. I did that. I did that. <clears throat> I blocked Vivek, and it felt really good. Oh, yeah? Who's yeah. Vivek? Huh? Who's Vivek? 
he's just this friend I had from Victoria, but he kept saying that he was channeling these past lives from from his lucid dreams that has stuff to do with me. And then every every couple of weeks, he would send me a message telling me I relapsed and I'm falling off my path. And I just I, I just was like, I get it. Like I'm fucking up. You don't need to tell me that. Like, and then he just to be like, you can change it. And like, you know, people are done with you. You know, the same story and doing the same shit. And he didn't he paraphrase it. He didn't. He was very nice about it. Um, but I was just like, you know what? like I need people that are gonna love me unconditionally that aren't gonna tell me like you know I need people that are laughing at me when I fuck up and telling me that like you know not that everyone's disappointed in me <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of pressure it is a lot of the last time you guys were telling me I relapsed and then I'm falling on my path and I was just like fuck off <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even found my path. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. If you have, if you got some channel in your lucid dream about what I should be doing, that's good. But you should be focusing on what you should be doing, and you know, having more dreams about your own world and your own path instead of, <laughs> you know, trying to get me to change on mine. <laughs> wow, that's, that's quite an imposition, isn't it? Yeah, and then I, I cut out David as well, but I'm gonna see him in a couple of days. So I, I did very bad at that. But he got my car. He got in a car accident with my car and he didn't tell me what yeah no yeah and i found out because i got four letters from icbc asking me to make a claim because they were gonna have to pay the other person for the damages <laughs> and i asked him i was like why didn't you tell me i found out through icbc and he said i just didn't want you to get mad <laughs> <laughs> how long ago was that that was last month or the accident was april 14th Wow. Does he still show up at your door kind of thing? No, not anymore. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. <laughs> no. We're not at that stage. <laughs> no, not anymore. Uh, not after he gave me scabies and told me after because he was embarrassed. <laughs> and then got in a car accident with my car and didn't tell me because he thought I'd be mad. <laughs> I realized that was a couple of red flags. <laughs> yep. Yeah. How old is he? He's 25. Yeah. Yeah, it shows. <laughs> well, God, like you have a, your thing is you have a social life and it's going to go on for a long time, like another 40 years before you realize that you want to be alone probably most of the time. Well, I've been alone for, well, no, I haven't. I've been, I've, but I, I've, I've been just with Nigel for four days, and that's oh, been really nice. That's been really nice. Oh, nice. And I, I canceled I canceled my plans tonight, because I was supposed to go rock climbing with Lindsay. And I'm like, no, uh -oh. no, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, like in a good way, but in a way that I'm like, OK, you're not taking my room anymore, and now I have to clean the shit out of it and hope that someone wants it, because I have no money. <laughs> right. Do you, do you need me to send you some food money or something? Like, no, no. My grandparents gave me three hundred dollars to fix my muffler and my exhaust system because uh -huh. my car was so bad, right. and I, I just, I just used it on cigarettes and gas. And I bought my friend a bunch of liquors for their birthday. And then I, I you know, I wonder, you know, I, I just keep digging myself in this hole. I, <laughs> Oh man! I have twenty bucks left, and I spent it. I spent six dollars on a latte today, and the rest is going to be Thing is, if you're someone that lives in the moment, any future sucks. Because <laughs> in that moment, you know, I didn't care about my finances. I wanted a six dollar latte. I wanted local. I wanted organic. I wanted farm to table. I wanted some steamed oat milk. Like. <laughs> I could have just gone to Hortons across the street and got the one that was a dollar, but no. <laughs> if you got twenty bucks left, it's a good thing to to use a to get a latte or mocha. I think so. It, it makes soothes, everything soothes better. the soul. Soothes the soul. It soothes, it soothes everything, and you know what? it gives you that energy, that clean energy that you need to maybe bring in something a little bit more to make some money. You know, just that when it's, 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 you got you got to live. You got to live like you got a lot of money. You know, it's it's manifestation. <laughs> it's, it's funny you know i couldn't 
like just to give that type of feedback to someone, even at 25, like to 20 year olds, you're off your path. Does anyone know what someone else's path is? And how do you like, does he know about stinky car? Does he know about stinky van? What happened? You know, no, no. I mean, he actually, he got upset at me because he wanted to go on a trip to honeymoon Bay uh, and just go for like a little like hike and kind of like carpool and camping trip. And I told him that I couldn't stinky van. He got upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I think, isn't it for you guys get mad because they want your time or whatever right and you're you got to make your choices and well the, the thing is after after i blocked him he sent me a message saying i you know let me know why you blocked me he, it, it was a text message and um because i still i still care for you as a friend and i was like you could have just said you still cared for me like yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> well i don't know i don't know no but i mean friend is like second string right like the guys are aiming at the first string they want to be first string i don't want anyone to be first string <laughs> <laughs> i i got a dollar like <laughs> well, no but you see no but you see someone like that you use your second string you got no money you put and you put a little message on your facebook going oh man i have no money and you tag all the second string guys, <laughs> right? <laughs> Make it blatant. And, and it's then, so bad. It's so no. bad. Because I was actually thinking about doing that. <laughs> and then you go, I'll have a mocha with whoever gives me the most money. It reminds me of when me and Nigel split up like last year. And I, I had stopped convinced myself that I never had to cook and I never had to pay food for food because yeah. I would just meet random guys on dating apps and they would take me over dinner. And I spent an entire week getting all of my meals paid for and having a new dinner at every a new place every single night. And he was like, I miss you. I love you so much. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm getting free dinner. <laughs> He's like, all you ever do is use people. No, but you know what you got to do is you got to expand it. And you, you say that, and then you don't tell them about Captain Sweet who comes along. So now Captain Sweet, and you get a dinner. Everyone needs dinner. And then you bring more people, right? So you always you got a bigger family who have to come with you everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there's someone that's my second string, I need their credit card, yep. and I need their Skip the Dishes account, and I need to make sure that that, that credit card is reliable so I can allow every single person close with me to log into that Skip the Dishes account and order whatever food they want at any given time. Yeah. Or else, you know, you're, you're, you're moved down <laughs> to 10th string. Like. That's true planetary guardian, code of honor. OPM, <laughs> OPM. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm cutting up my time translator. I'm making, uh, I'm making the system. By the time I show up anywhere, it's it'll be bad, man. It'll be bad. <laughs> you, just, you just brewing through your meditation, and you you come from a point of nothingness, but you're confused because you're in a group setting now with something to show, and that somethingness. And then you have to add people asking you what you've been up to, and you've really just been meditating and trying to not be real. And so you realize they're that you're real, and that they see you, and that you're that you explain that. <laughs> Maybe you can be my spokesperson, so I don't have to talk, and then you just explain everything. <laughs> I, I, think just, I think I'm as bad as you, honestly. I think I, I, I just look at them and be like, you see me, I see you, you hear me. I am in this setting. I Other people are around. They see me. I am real. I exist to them. Uh, and they're like, what is that thing in your hands? And you're like, oh, I'm going to hide in the bathroom. I like it. I'll just stand behind you looking ominous and impressive and nod my head to everything you're saying, but you're very <laughs> mean to everyone else if they if I think they don't agree with you. I mean, honestly, like I say that, but it's not a joke. That's how my mind works. Like <laughs> that's that's how I felt yesterday when I ended up in that group where we're all doing the convoy. I was like, I didn't have my contacts in, I didn't have any vision and I couldn't see anything. So I, I forgot that everything around me was real. 
and people are talking like this lady came up to me and she was like oh like you're gonna be cold and I was like I have a sweater in my car and then I was like I have a car and like they see me they see what I'm wearing they're thinking about the weather I had no idea about the weather I like I had I and then I'm gonna go to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm bad communicating. Whoa. I don't think people realize that how bad I am at socializing sometimes. Are you like paraphrasing? Or are you exactly repeating? No, like that is that is how my mind works. <laughs> Like I was in this, I, I was in this parking lot, and I was going to go sleep in it. Well, it wasn't even a parking lot. It was just on the side of the road, like in deep, deep lake couch. And and before I went to bed, I lied down. And I thought, you know, someone's gonna drive past my car. Someone's gonna drive past my car in the morning and see my car parked in this spot. Someone's gonna see. They might even look in. They might even see me sleeping. I don't even know if this is a good spot. What if someone lives across the street and they can hear me? And you know, my lights are on, and I'm waking them up. And then I'm like, I have to have a phone call. So this phone call might upset everyone in this neighborhood because I have no idea where I am. And then I'm like, what if they come in and they see me, and I'm not supposed to be parked here, and they wake me up? What if someone calls in? What if the neighbors are upset? And you know, it's like one in the morning. Like, <laughs> what? You honestly, you you need some of my nothingness, man. Like just, I got too much somethingness. Yeah. Like, it's ruining me. Like that's, uh, I guess it's good caution, it's good discernment. You're checking things out. No, we gotta we gotta YOLO more. I think you know, just fuck it, sleep in the ditch. Like I want yeah. that attitude. Yeah, generally, generally, I mean, if you're sleeping in the car with a blanket. I mean, no one knows you're there. They don't check cars, they don't care. But RVs, they care. Or vans, oh, I guess not vans too much. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, don't you, like I always just find a spot. I find a spot in the area where I know no one goes or it's a perfect spot and every night I go to the same spot. And then, well, like, uh yeah, in my situation, I was on four hours of sleep, and I had been partying the night before, and I just drove two hours, or like, yeah, around two hours, and I was, I was running, I was running off, I had a bunch of sugar, I was on a sugar crash, me and Nigel got in this big argument, and I, it was so bad, we were driving back from suit, this is, like, this is how abnormal I've been, I'm actually kind of worried, we were driving back from suit, this, this is where my comedy show comes in, we were driving back from suit, and we were driving in my car, and I just started screaming, and I screamed for three hours. Like I, he couldn't even drive. He had to pull over on the side of the road because he couldn't. Three focus hours. On the road. I screamed. Yeah, like three I just, hours. I just sat there and I screamed. I screamed at the top of my lungs. Like I would not. People inside a car. Of, yeah, people probably beside thought I was him. Me. Yeah, people thought, he, probably thought. And, yeah, I just screamed. He didn't slap you. No, he just said I can't focus. <laughs> can't focus three hours. You didn't say more than that. <laughs> But I just, I just screamed, like, literally at the top of my lungs. And I just stop. Why? I don't know. I just, I just, I just got so fed up. <laughs> we were bickering. And I just got so fed up with this constantly bickering, constantly fighting, that I just screamed for three hours. It was like, all of it was just bottled inside of me. All this anger of like, just shut the fuck up. And I don't want to deal with this anymore. I was just so mad and it was so full of rage. But then my rage turned into this like hyper emotional. And so I could just, and then I was mad at the same time. So I was just sobbing and I was just screaming. I was just belligerently screaming. And when I would, and then I'd stop screaming for a moment, I would breathe. And then I would start screaming louder and then it was unstoppable. And every time I stopped screaming, I would scream more. Yeah, and then you'd think I'd lose my voice, but I, I, you know, I, I didn't. And then I dropped them off at his house, and then I, I left, and I started screaming. <laughs> and I think that's why I was worried, you know, if I was waking up people in the neighborhood, because I just drove in around the same area for like forty-five minutes, screaming very loud at the top of my lungs. <laughs> and he just sat there. Yeah, he told me to stop screaming, and he asked me what I was screaming about, and he said that we could talk about it, and he told me to calm down because he couldn't focus. Yeah, and I like, just kept screaming. That's 20 seconds. You're screaming three hours. Yeah. I could take it for, for fucking two minutes. I'd yeah, I, 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 don't know. I don't know how he does it. I, I, I can't stand people screaming. 
I can't. I can't it. either. And then the only thing, the only thing that shut me up was he started screaming too. Yeah. And then I was mad that he was screaming because I, he was fucking up my screaming. <laughs> and he was fucking up my screen mojo. And he took it from me. And so I couldn't scream anymore because I was mad that he was screaming, and that was pissing me off. So I stopped screaming until he stopped screaming. And then when he stopped screaming, I started screaming again. <laughs> You're fucking nuts. I you're, not, you're not off your path. You're, you're fucking nuts. Yeah. I that's, just, that's the same to me as when you were crying for three or four days. Yeah. Like, who can I do just, that? I'm just really emotional. Holy shit. I'm just really like hypersensitive and hyper emotional. No wonder, think... no wonder I got that vibe about you. What vibe? When we were mad at each other. Twice, because I can just I can feel you from a distance. I know you're when you're in your negative space, and I think it's directed at me. Then I then I go to war. <laughs> Look at you. Uh huh. That's no, but like that's insane. Like you were, you were screaming at. Do you know why? Is he's not listening to you. No, no, he, he actually was telling me I wasn't listening to him. So I just started screaming. No, but like, why, what are you so mad about? I was just, I mean, it's been four fucking years of just always bickering and fighting with each other. That I was just like, I, I was at such a point where I just didn't even, I didn't even have the energy to sit down and like have an, a normal constructive conversation about it. I was just so mad that it kept happening. And I, I just didn't want to call him names. I didn't want to bitch at him. I didn't want to bicker. I just was so frustrated. I just started screaming. I get it. I, get it. I mean, you guys keep going back and forth, back and forth, and then, but it's it probably gets worse and worse as you go deep back in again. Because, you, I mean, you guys are, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are masochists. He told me I should date a masochist. Yeah, well, but I just, fuck, three, like, told, three hours, three hours. How I, you? I stopped for a little bit. <laughs> and then he went and had a phone call with Day. Are you serious? Three hours? I would say around two, two, because there was a bit of stopping. There were, there was some artist guy who went into a bathroom. He was so pissed off. And for 24 hours or something, he just broke things in the bathroom, like, for, that sounds like me. When I was a child, I would just sit there and just cut pieces of paper into little bits. And I would just sit there for hours cutting smaller bits and take all the paper until the whole ground was covered in like little bits of paper. And I would just sit there with the scissors, like really proud of myself. Just just everything cut up into shreds. I tried to cut the TV in half with a pair of scissors. My dad came home from work and there was giant scratches on the TV and me just sitting there with a pair of scissors with a bunch of little bits of paper cut up into tiny little bits and shreds under me and the whole floor just covered in bits of paper as well. I just tried to cut everything around me up in little bits. And this is when you're mad? <laughs> I was just, I was just a really I was a really mad baby like if I apparently in my crib if no one came and got me and I was crying I would just scream and I would scream for hours and I would I was just a really upset baby you know I'd just sit in my crib and someone would pick me up and be like oh baby's crying and I would just scream at them. So you, do you hate being ignored? Well I don't know I don't think so. <laughs> I think so actually. I'm <laughs> not kidding. Is he, is he yeah, what? Does, does he ever ignore you? Well, I think our big our big issue that we were talking about in the car was about how we had different attachment styles. And he has an avoidant attachment style and I have an anxious attachment style. So yeah. all of the things that he does are my biggest triggers. And all the things that I do are his triggers that push him away. So every single time that I would try to communicate with him lovingly, that would make him more avoidant. And then when he realized that he was being more avoidant, he would fall back into more be a more secure attachment style. And then I subconsciously would turn into an avoidant partner. So it was just this giant, giant thing of like me doing all of his biggest triggers and me doing all of his biggest triggers and then us just flipping the coin every single like month and every single week in this push and pull and like I am better now because I'm at this and then I would take his bad traits and so that was the thing I was screaming out in the car is because it's just constant so what what's the remedy <laughs> huh 
I don't know. I don't know. I think the biggest remedy would be me working on my anxious attachment style and him working on his avoidant attachment style. And a big thing to you in the last two months that was bothering me was that he went back into his drug addiction. And when he goes back into his drug addiction, it's almost like he has his other partner and he's madly in love with them. And that is opiates. And that is his addiction. And that, that is something that, you know, fuels him and he'll, he'll do anything to, you know, get that kind of fix. So it always just, and I don't, I don't appreciate that. So it always put me on the sidelines and put that in number one. And, but it would also make him more avoidant at the end of the day, because he also had to hide his addiction from me because he knew it would upset me. And then he was always just, you know, on his own world with Ty. So I don't know, he's seeing his counselor and doing therapy about his avoidant attachment styles. And now he's detoxing and getting clean. And I just need to stop being so extra emotional and excessive and, I don't know, acknowledge that he's trying his best and that he cares about me and that I don't have to make all these problems out of nothing. We're asking the, the Oracle question here. Okay. Um, I sent Lindsay a message. She was like, where are you moving to if you, you know, sub out your room? And I was like, well, I'm thinking about moving on the boat with Nigel if we don't kill each other. And then I told that to Nigel and he was like, wow, Lindsay's probably worried. She probably thinks she's going to have a dead friend. <laughs> okay, so what's, what's the question? What is the question? <clears throat> That's what you got to come up with. Um, how can I improve my attachment style? What happened to the weekly weekly meetups for this? Um, well, everyone either went homeless or uh, started school. No, no. Two different <laughs> paths. Basically, everyone's life went to hell. <laughs> That's so true. Like everything hey, just this. shit the hit the fan. Can you, can you read this? Yeah. <clears throat> Humor to value the faculty perceiving what is amusing or comical. Ah. Huh? Guidance to assist people towards finding the right path, which was so helpful to you. Education, the after process of imparting or acquiring particular knowledge or skills as for a profession. Mm -hmm. right. So what does that say to you? I think for the humor, it's, it's being a it's value, value being able to laugh at myself through it all and not take it so seriously. I think humor is the only thing that really gets me through anything. <laughs> and it's so important and valuable to me. And guidance um, to, um, to, to allow myself to, and with the education and the guidance, to educate myself further on the topic and to dive deeper into it without getting so upset, I guess. Because I always, if, I, if I'm reading about it and I, I acknowledge past memories that have hurt me, I just completely break down. So just using the humor and the education, but also the guidance to work through that and, you know, help with my dynamic and also, yeah, with myself and, and involved in it. I don't know. I like it. I like it. Look for guidance in how to deal with your attachment style, right? Because there's some education out there. But, lots. but uh, it's not all going to be uh, peaches and cream. Learning about your attachment, like, have you done any research about it yourself? A little bit. I, I know someone, um, I know someone who's very into it, who, who might uh, be someone who can help you. Cool. Uh, it's your specialty. Wow. Yeah. So if you want, uh, I, I can introduce you to her. Rothschild research. <laughs> That's, oh shit, this is being recorded. Yeah, I'm watching. Oh shit. You have a file about everyone? What's that? You have a file about everyone? File? This is for just remedies. Uh, we should see what I got. Okay, there we go. Have you used the remedy in since I've talked to? 
the last time I re used the remedy was when I was in the boat like two or three months ago coming back from Cortez and I was like I, I don't know why something clicked that I hadn't used it since because everything fell apart with that <laughs> um, but I asked the remedy if I should move to Cortez and it gave me the the thumbs up and then yeah and so I didn't listen to that it worked out <laughs> Do you save them when you do them? Mm, I should. I usually just use them on my phone. Um, but if it's important, I'll screenshot it. I mean, it doesn't look that good, though. No, no, it's true. Uh, but researching your attachment style is, is really, really valuable for all of your close relationships, but it also helps you understand yourself more. It's also really difficult. I have cried a lot. <laughs> oh, Sabrina, type into Facebook, Sabrina Lacani. How do you spell Lacani? L-A-K-H-A-N-I. Okay, one second. I was on Marketplace looking for a dog. I don't know why. I can't take care of myself, but I want a dog. Okay. <laughs> L-A-K-H-A-N-I? Yeah. Fine. Is the picture is her with a dog? Probably. She's not that dog. Yeah. She's friends with Lindsay. Well, they probably met through me somehow. Cool. Um, yeah, so give her a, a message. Add her as a friend. And uh, say that I suggested... Uh, Look, look, I think they have something on attachment theory right there. There's a mirror. Oh, on a feed, the zoom? Yeah. Cool. Oh, cool. Yeah, she does workshops too attachment styles and trauma, demystified. Wow. Yeah, the thing is, I think I, I, I could be really good if I wasn't so stagnant. <laughs> I actually put in the work. <laughs> How do you deal with feeling stagnant? I just take it as a part of life. All right. Um, I think there are times when we're supposed to be more restful and supposed to sort of like, you got to look at your cycles and look at, you know, times. If you're stagnant, it might be a time for a lot of inner reflection and you know, you don't always want to be on the go kind of thing. True. So it's, we use these words to describe certain things, but it's, it's like, look at, what about those, I gave you a bunch of those cycles, right? Your, your patterns for the year. Mm -hmm. Did you look at them? Mm -hmm. Did you make sure that there's somewhere you can sort of every month take a look at and just assess? I should, I should, I should. Every time I look into that kind of stuff, I just do it for the day. And then I kind of keep it on the side note, like when everything was falling apart and my cars were all breaking, I was like, well, I'm entering a different cycle with Saturn, so. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, have you have you been enjoying yourself, though? Yeah, I think, I think I'm having a good time. But I, I don't know. I, I think, think a big thing for me that I've been thinking about in the last couple of couple of months is how I really appreciate and value being able to move. And I think this vehicle has brought a lot of joy and getting my full license has brought a lot of joy into me because I, I need constant travel or movement or else I'm just I'm just sped up. Like I, I, I need to I need to physically move even if it's just like around the block, even if it's just to the beach, even if it's just a 40 minute drive. Like I, I just I need that to feel satisfied in some kind of way. So I've been I've been feeling really good with that. Yeah. How about you? Are you feeling satisfied? Well, I'm sort of the opposite. I'm, I, I found um, it isn't to move, it's to be still. So that's why I'm meditating so much. And I'm kind of, you know, it's like complete, utter focus to get what I got to get done. And it, it's not, it's not easy. For me. You know, like if I showed you everything I was working on, <laughs> I mean, it's like, 
fuck, man? Like, how am I supposed to fucking keep up to this shit? Right? Okay. <laughs> I've got like three major projects. I've got like 10 different prototypes. I've got like all the fucking media shit that I'm doing that is rarely probably related in a good way. And I'm working on like 10 websites. Um, Fairy Creek, which probably would be where my heart is. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm for the first time, I'm kind of focusing in such a way where I think I may get whatever I'm trying to do to that next level. So when I go on the road, then I'm not just on the road fucking diving into nothingness again. I want to I wanna go on the road and have the stuff online actually working. Like, so when I'm not there, it's still working. That's the dream. That's the fucking dream. And that, that's something I need to focus on as well, is having that kind of constant online currency that flows while I'm asleep, while I'm awake, and just have something behind the scenes that's always moving like on my behalf, but it's always moving, you know, kind of slowly, but always in the direction of like, you know, giving me abundance and stability and that to, to, you know, do what I need to do. Well, I mean, what I see is you, you being a traveling facilitator, you got a synergizer in your car, you got a card set and you, you can use that to bring people together in a way that, you know, no one could, it's so simple. You sit around the table, turn over the cars, ask a question. Ask a question, turn over the cards, and then have everyone just listen to each other in a, in a very focused way. And I don't, and, and, and have them pay you. <laughs> I was thinking, what was it? I, I had a picnic, I had a picnic with my brother and Nigel outside of my parents' house when I was for a visit in the middle of the night, and we got curry and we sat outside on this table. And we were, Nigel was talking about some kind of facilitating um, and how some, sometimes it takes a long time or something. And I, I started laughing because when we were at Fairy Creek, I remember when we did the Synergizer and um, everyone was chatting for like an hour or there was like a two three hour hours. Synergizer. It was, three, it was three hours. Three hours, three hours for a Synergizer. Uh, and then after like, we, we you were so drained and I was so drained and we both looked at each other and we were like, I don't know, like, I, I don't know if I'm caught up to deal with people like this. <laughs> this is exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was at the eight table the eight table and uh, everyone had a lot to say which is good it's good i mean we were in a beautiful forest in the middle of nowhere with nothing else to do <clears throat> you know yeah <laughs> anyway i'm hoping that <laughs> would you want to do that I'm just imagining me trying to sleep in the back of my car. I'm just getting like crumbled at this giant board. And then uh, I'm just like trying to throw it on the passenger seat. And like people are driving by and there's me with like a little blinky with my like foot in the trunk. And then the entire front of the car is just this giant wood board. And I've been like driving past and I'm on the side of the road in the woods. And they're just like, what? what? Uh, but yeah, that's sounds right up my alley. <laughs> You could put it on the rooftop or on the back, make it look really cool. But no, I, I want to make it vinyl. I want to make it vinyl so you can roll it up mm -hmm. and just roll it up. Yeah, I mean, I totally do that. And I, I think I, I'm going to be traveling, hopefully, to the Gulf Islands really soon. So that would be a really good place because there's always beach fires and there's always like awesome, free spirited, like minded people that you know, are just outside have, for the fun of it enjoy nature and life and all that stuff that you know have the time to really sit down and are able to absorb that kind of knowledge and sit down with it and try something new so that, that would be actually really good um I, I would like to be able to share that with people if there's a way that it's vinyl and something i can take with me and honestly like i keep a board game in my car so when i'm with people i, I can bring it out and we can play games together if it's in a group setting so i mean what's the difference it would just be something that's more beneficial in the long term for people yeah like it'd be great to show up at the roadblocks and they're just standing around and then again bring up the table sit down sit and just have a different type of conversation right i mean it's uh that's what i wanted to do those motherfuckers and then i got pissed off <laughs> from the get-go it's hard not to i don't know it's it's Fairy Creek is very interesting for me with my like psychology of it. 
because I, I'm so for the trees and I'm, I'm so for everything that they're doing. And I believe that these ancient trees should stand tall and morally that that's correct. But then I also, I feel strange that, you know, the only person from the patch of that is Bill Jones. And I, I know I feel strange that, you know, there's been so much controversy and I, I feel strange that, you know, that they were rude to me and kicked out all my friends and, you know, <laughs> but I know deep in my heart, I will, you know, regret not showing up and not being a part of it, but it, it's so, it makes me feel like a secret agent. Like, I, I, I feel like I'm like, ah, you know, like, it wasn't me, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not weird. Uh, <laughs> please, please, let me, I didn't scream for a few hours yesterday. Uh, hey, hey, no, I'll, I'll be. I'm an ally. I'm no. I'm. I, I'm really put together. I. 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 I did my laundry yesterday, and I. I haven't not done it in three months. <laughs> Actually, you know what? If you were like a secret weapon, and the cops were there, and then you just start screaming, and you just don't stop. That that would drive them nuts. Nigel would be there with me though. He'd be so pissed again. <laughs> I can't believe in a car for three hours. I think honestly, realistically, I think it was it was around two. It was around two. It was so bad too because he he went he left the car, and he went and called Kai, and he had a chat with Kai and Day, and it was their seven year anniversary. And it's just like they're probably having this beautiful night together. And it, you know, Nigel calls him because he's he's not gonna meet up with them anymore because you know he's on the side of the road with me screaming. And then he comes <laughs> comes back in the car and he's like, Diana says she loves you. And I start screaming more and I'm like, Why did you leave the car? We're supposed to be we're supposed to be driving. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really wanted to go home at that point. I was sad. I didn't want to be around him anymore. But I'm sure he felt the same. And then you know, I I have the I have the I have, I actually I have I you know there's just some foot up my ass that thinks when Nigel says I don't want you to stay over tonight because I'm feeling you know a little bit overwhelmed by your behavior, I start screaming more. <laughs> <laughs> I would think you'd be happy because that's what you want. Yeah, but and then I got really mad, and then I left, and I called him screaming. What after that? And, I, and, and, and then I and then I drove over to his house in the middle of the night, what? and I opened the to door, scream? and I went to bed to scream at him. And then, no. you, and then you went to bed. Yeah. <laughs> ah, to be young and in love. So that was embarrassing because I knew when I was screaming, I was like, I'm never going to tell anyone that I, I screamed like this. <laughs> and I was like, and he's not going to tell anyone either. <laughs> I'll bet you'll, you'll, how many, you, I'll bet you'll tell everybody. No, it's not, it's no one's, no one's goddamn business. I'm done talking about my relationship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Only the highlights, only the highlights, like screaming. Good. I screamed a bit. I got mad. Did he say how long did he scream for? Huh? How long did he scream for? A little bit. Just a little bit. Did he scream words or did he scream? What are you fucking talking about? <laughs> Sometimes I just, I mean, I didn't scream any words when I screamed. I just screamed. Right. <laughs> no, I was joking about my screaming. Right. I, was, I, was... I, I just thought everyone might be, maybe screams and no one talks about it. <laughs> Well, I shout, yeah. I mean, I'll shout. If I get angry, I'm definitely a shouter. Um, yeah. I mean, if you, if you me and you would we'd probably go out today. Eh? I just think I should scream more, you know? It worked when I was a child. That's yeah. why I'm mad. I'm at the grocery store. I'm just going to scream. Nobody knows how to deal with a screamer. No, it doesn't, especially in adult screaming. You know, oh. like a baby screaming, they're like, okay, you know, we'll get you some snacks. But if an adult's just standing in the middle of the road screaming, like, the are rolled up, like, <laughs> look the other way and put on the gas pedal, we go on fast, let's get out of here. <laughs> like, something just shocks in our system where we're like, I, I absolutely do not know how to deal with this. Yeah. I can't, holy shit.
What's the time translator for? That's the main focus point for the whole inflow matrix. And what's it for? It's a clock. It's the main timer for the inflow matrix operating system. You ever think if I was killed that you might have to be the one who carries on the very secret plan? I thought about that. You thought about that? Yeah. <laughs> was that before or after the screening? I think Kyle talked to me about it. Oh yeah, that you guys would have to carry on the, the torch? Yeah. <laughs> You're so well prepared. So well trained. I think I do a damn good job, honestly. What would you do first? I would start a Facebook group. <laughs> and what would you say in the Facebook group? I would post like little videos and clips of people doing the synergizer and I would add people to it that are passionate about it. And I would figure out what like age range and what part of the world the most people were and I'd make it global. And I would like make different ones for like different places in different languages. And I would um, have have a studio. I'd rent out a studio because I just rented out a studio at the same area that Kai rents a studio for 150 bucks a month. And I would rent a studio for like 200 bucks a month. And I would just have people come into it and do facilitatings. And then in the summertime, I would do them on the grass. And I would and then I would post the videos and the clips on the group. And then I would train other people to do it for me. And I would just make a shit ton of them. Like I would make like, I would make like hundreds. I'd make a thousand of them. And I just, I would just print them out and just leave them. I would just leave them. I would, I would you know, like little polls where people leave like, oh, like lost my dog. You know, please find it. I would just put those there with the address of the studio and what it's all about. Kind of like what they did with the Agora. Like when, like oh. years ago, they would just print the, they would put the Agora everywhere. There was flyers everywhere. You couldn't walk around town without finding the Agora. And so it just leave them in little places like the Agora. I would make little fold up books with tiny little card sets that were like, maybe like 50 cents a piece to make and I would just leave them at the nom and I would just leave them at like you know the crystal shop and like other different places and just have the Facebook group at the bottom and people that were interested about it they can join the Facebook group and then that's all through word of mouth and other people that are drawn to those kind of colors and those kind of things so that is living in its own synchronicity and then I'd probably you know fall off my rocker or something and then just stop so, posting on the Facebook group and then so is there anything stopping that right now from doing all that no, I just, I have really good ideas, but I never follow up with them. I could do so many good things if I had a better attendance span. <laughs> I could actually do something special, you know, if that actually gets my word. Well, I mean, <laughs> I would support you in doing all that. <clears throat> if you want to do it. <laughs> You're like, free marketing, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk more do, that is awesome. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm hoping that one day something, I mean, not that our talks aren't enough, but I'm hoping that there's something in them. Really I'm hoping needs. that someone does all the work for me. <laughs> all the work. That's what Miss Plum tells me. I'm fucking working 24 hours a day. I ask her to do anything. And it's like, Jesus. It's really hard when you work online and when you do stuff from home. Like every every time I've, I've worked online extensively, people don't believe me. They don't believe that I'm doing anything. <laughs> or like you know, they see me at home and they're like having like in the same kind of clothes, you know, same background, and they're just like, oh yeah. But it's like no, I, I've been working all day. Like I just worked a twelve hour day. But no one takes it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> not have to do with the content of what you're saying they do they're they don't take you seriously anyway no they don't take anyone seriously who that was anyone no one takes anyone seriously <laughs> <laughs> i mean that's true i mean that's yeah, it's a big bit of a broad stroke but <laughs> I think I have trouble taking people seriously. Yeah. 
Because you know, oh, I don't know. Every time I've met a celebrity, everyone's like, oh my God, a celebrity. And I'm just like, I see a person standing outside having a cigarette. I want one. And they're like, oh my God, I love my music. And I'm like, hey, can I have a smoke? <laughs> Smokes your snacks. <laughs> Smokes your snacks. Smokes our snacks. Smokes your snacks for my mental health. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I can make flyers. But because I got, do you know any artists that we could put as the background for the synergizer, and then I'll just put the the card spots on top. I'm thinking we could just make uh, partners with artists and come up with unique synergizers. I mean, I could paint them. My art's not that good, but I can improve. <laughs> well, why don't you start making your own synergizer then? I should. I think I should start taking like ADHD meds or something. Like, you know, just, I feel like I, I have so much potential, but you know, like I'll try, I'll try to do one thing. And then like 10 minutes later, I'm doing something else. It takes oh. me probably like a week to clean my room because then I'm just sitting on the floor with wings on, like playing with toys. <laughs> That's fine. You just got to learn to work on like 10 things, but get things going. Like yeah, learn, get excited about completing things, but you can still bounce between a lot of different things. I think that I get excited about starting things and then I get so excited that I started something and then I'll do it for a couple hours and then I'll never get back to it again. I don't know. I mean, uh, I remember at your age, let's say, I wasn't outputting anything and I was, I was just the same as you, just having fun and rambling about. And it wasn't until later on or I guess I hung with teachers who I, I saw how they worked. I thought I worked hard, then I hung with this guy, and he was like, that was nothing compared to him. His work ethic was like 100 times better than mine. And I thought I was shit hot. What is it? I, I saw this TikTok the other day, and it was talking about how there's some people you work with, and they say, oh, I don't even take breaks. I work. I work all the time. I don't even, I don't even, and then this person on the TikTok was like, no one in this room, your boss doesn't care if you live or die. Like, I'm going to go sit down. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, if you're working for a big corporation, it's like, they don't really care. So I, maybe I've just had bad luck because I, I don't know. I don't want, I don't, I think, I think the laziest part about my generation is I don't, I don't want to work and put a bunch of, have this really good work ethic for other people when it's not something I'm passionate about. Yeah, but I mean, do you get that whatever I'm putting forward, the main thing is to help you design your ideal job? But I feel like I already know what my ideal job is. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sit around here and drink some booze. Talk to Cat and Sweep, that's my job. This is coffee. This is coffee. It's just got a little fancy cup. It does look like a nice little cover room, though. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, uh, I feel like my ideal job is working with kids and doing outdoor stuff and like creating courses and things for kids. Like, I want to make sock puppets for kids and you know just make little crafts with kids because if I, I will constantly work with kids, I never get old and people keep breeding, so there will always be kids. Right. I that's, that's what you think. Me too. I want to work with kids. I miss mm -hmm. kids. I miss kids a lot. Right? They're so much funner than adults. I don't want to work with adults. Adults, I'm, ow, fuck. Maybe you should work with adults. I don't want to. They irritate me. They, it's just like it's too much. It's too, they're, they're too far gone. They're too mm -hmm. far gone. Well, my aunt, my aunt works at a Waldorf school in Nelson. And she told me that if I ever needed a job, that I can come to Nelson and stay with her and work teaching at Waldorf. Really? And I was sitting in my car today and I was like, why the fuck am I now doing that? I'm so stagnant. I could be working at a Waldorf school. Like, <laughs> I feel like that's a dream job, working at a Waldorf school and just teaching kids anthroposophy and like Rudolf Steiner's teachings. Yeah. No, I mean, wow, that's, you should do that. I know, why am I not? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's I think it's it's time it's time for me to let go of an era and jump onto a new one because I've uh, yeah I think I have a lot of potential that I'm not using and I've just got too comfortable for sure for sure um you know uh Deanna say she was interested in getting some training mm -hmm. from Captain Sweet mm -hmm. in regards to synergizer and stuff Mm -hmm. well, that'd be good. Yep. I think that'd be perfect. I think Diana's the best facilitator ever. Yeah, no, she's a natural. She's so good at it. She's so good with people. She's just she's just so such a good a good human. She's perfect for the job. She's so yeah. compassionate and so kind and so wonderful. And so intuitive and so understanding. So grounded. It's like so strong. I just that that that, that, that you crack the code. Like <laughs> and all there. I know. <laughs> I know. I, I figure if I can just get the synergizer in the hands of one person who who's excited about it because you know i don't want to do the synergizers i mean I'll, I'll do one or i'll do what you know I, I do i need it's a product it's a great product it's a great product let's get out in the world so like why why isn't it why isn't it because i'm because if that's all i did then i could bring it to the world i mean I, again i I, that's just one product of like a whole bunch. Yeah, but if you just drop this giant load of like all of these projects that you've done in like 30 years, the world isn't going to be able to like compute. You got to drop them one at a time. I know, but, but I mean, uh, but which that's means... literally that that's how you work. That's how you teach. Like last time you were, I was like looking at a board and then you're like, and look at this thing I'm working on and look at this thing and look at this thing and look at this thing and look at this thing. And then I'm not able to process the first thing. And then now I can't process anything. And then you're like, why don't you get it? <laughs> That's why I should not teach it or be the person who's in charge of that because I'm fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how yeah. right you are. Huh? Oh, how right you are. Well, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> there could be someone that's just like, yeah, I read that entire board and understood it in uh, two minutes. Give me that other one. Yeah, I processed it all in 50 seconds. That one in 20 seconds. This one, 10. I know all of it. I've cracked the code now. Give me 15 more. <laughs> I, like, I don't know. That, that probably says. <laughs> I don't know. Some minds work differently. <laughs> that's funny. I, I sleep on a bed that's broken. And every night that I go to bed, it breaks more and it slides down. So every night, and then the, and, um, and it, like the, the, the tacks have fallen off. And then it, it, like this part's up in the air. And this part's all broken. It moves down. And so I, I wake up on a slant every night falling through a crack and I, I still haven't fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> I love your authenticity. It's just so good. Authenticity is magnetic. You know, I spent $150 to go to a course once to make like vision and dream boards and figure out what my life purpose was. And at the end of it, they just gave me a piece of paper that said authenticity is magnetic. And then I had to write down into journal prompts that I would do normally at home. And <laughs> the worst part is I had to borrow money off my grandpa for the course because I was like 16 and he drove me there and it was seven hours long. And I didn't learn anything that I didn't already know. And then when I left and he was, that was the course and all I had was a piece of paper paper that said authenticity is magnetic and I'm never giving you courses for that again <laughs> I think anyone can sell a course I think you should sell courses with your boards yes 150 bucks more than that there's a little piece of paper that says synergizer is authentic <laughs> if you have business ideas I'm willing to work with you I, I think I've given up <laughs> just as i started to get going <laughs> i've had business ideas for like three years what yeah with me yeah we've known each other for three years yeah covid's been happening for almost two now 
Holy shit. Okay, what did you say? You you, you what? You presented business ideas or yeah. like what? No, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't remember, I don't remember you pitching me on anything. I pitched so many things. I just stopped pitching. Like what? I <laughs> did I just like miss the pitch? Probably. You pitched me on business ideas around anything of mine. Yeah. Name one. <laughs> one. Remember that time we were gonna make a board um for the ninth dimension and it was gonna be purple and it was gonna be carved out of different wood into a spiral. So when you went and sat around the board, it would be a nine moving into a spiral and it would go through all the different dimensions, through the different conversation types that you have into through like going from the first dimension to the ninth dimension and like how we can move our heart to a different frequency based on that. Because I was reading the book Alchemy of the Nine Dimensions and you told me that you had read it before. So we were working and I was sending you all these crop circles and all these different like geometry that was made and like sent down and channeled from the aliens so we can make a board that was shaped through the ninth dimension that was channeled in the crop circles so you bring people and have this like interdimensional platform that would help ascend humanity good idea i uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, i, I might have forgot that one was it what do you don't give me that burrow <laughs> stare no i was so pumped to let it never happen but wait a second wait a second what what did you do about it you just said it to me and then what you're waiting for me to come up with the purple table and ready to go kind of thing like what was the next like just... i don't know you know this is why i need to continue my projects okay do, do you have a second one <gasps> for a board or for no, a second second entrepreneurial pitch that you gave me oh i told you that you should sell the synergizers and patent them and sell them at the metaphysical shops around duncan in the cash and valley and that way that you could get a little bit of extra income and then make it so it's not so much of a secret plan but it's a plan that's for everyone and that it's inclusive and so people don't you feel don't like think i have the idea for... of taking the synergizer and selling it in retail stores well i know that you have that idea but then when we were in the we were in the group chat and then um Lara was talking about or Lara was talking about how there needs to be like a planetary guardian toolkit. Yeah. And that was something that I told you like three years ago. And you were like, great been, idea. And I was like, the, yeah, I'm done. I've, like, I've, <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been working on the planetary guardian toolkit, the actual thing that it is called, like for over 50, 20 years. What the fuck is it? <laughs> Are you coming up to a carpenter and saying, yeah, I, I told you about the hammer. I told you about the hammer. Yeah, that, that's the worst, honestly. That's the worst. I had that experience. I was at my parents' house, and my brother um, was doing absolutely nothing all day. And my dad um, trimmed the whole, like, cleaned the whole garden and, like, planted everything and took out the garbage and stacked the wood. And my brother came out just to tell him that the fridge was a mess. And my, my dad actually, like, tried to, like, <laughs> fucking physically, like, get in a fucking fight with him. <gasps> Yeah, your brother actually truly complained about the fridge. Yeah, it came out with a bin yeah. and the apples were rotting. They smelled like shit and just threw them at my dad. Yeah. <gasps> How old was he? That was like two weeks ago. He's still 28. Like... What? No. <laughs> or 29. I forget now. But... <laughs> he wasn't joking. No, he was actually like really mad. <laughs> Holy shit. How do you and your brother get along? He gave me uh, like a, a pharmaceutical med for like anxiety and sleeping and then texted me at like 11, 11 at night telling me not to take it and then I still throw it out and then because I didn't talk to him for a couple of days and he thought I took it and I died. <laughs> and so I don't know what kind of med it is. <laughs> You guys, you guys get along well just recently he started taking antidepressants and he actually it's working for him he's easier to get along with oh before then he was just really really bad alcoholic and he got really abusive when he drank <laughs> he went to rehab and the first day he came out of rehab he drank an entire bottle of wine that me and nigel had made from blackberries that we harvested at the Hawthorne and I gave to my dad as a gift. And his first day coming home, he just slammed the whole thing and was up all night. (laughs) 
<laughs> but now he's good. He's, he's a good one. He means well. <laughs> so when's the planetary guardian toolkit out? Like, can I, when can I purchase it? <laughs> I'm working on it. Hey, I'm working on it. <laughs> well, like, I got the, I got it so I can get the lenses. Do you find that you're a perfectionist with your work? Perfectionist? Yeah, like, you know, it's not done yet, or like, uh, just, I need well, more time or anything. Or, like, it's not exactly how it needs to be, so I don't want it to be out to the world. I think it, people don't talk to me. No, they don't. <laughs> I've never done that before. Because they're lenses, right? Like, if I'm looking through the resource lens, different from looking through the path lens. Look into the direction. That's right. Can you see that? Do you have this map memorized? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have this? Can <laughs> <laughs> I put my lenses on? <laughs> and I wonder why the Guardians is not growing. <laughs> I don't have the map memorized. No. <laughs> I should though. When you get your flow map memorized, you will go sweep. I'm getting the plan. I get it. I don't know, man. Because like, when I saw Kyle a couple months ago, he like he was like, "Do you have your flow map recognized?" <laughs> and then I was like, "No." Did he? Did yeah. He? And then he recited them all. Really? And he was like, ah, "I'm the only one that knows this plan." No. Yeah. You're just trying to make me do. No, it. it's true. Actually, it's true. Well, I miss Kyle, and I, I do see him as an important part of the plan. Um, but it's going to take a while, I think, for me still to get ready on on the inner workings. I just don't want to. I want to go with some, again, like I said, the plan working online, but I'm not around. How, so, like, what platform would you do that on? Um, not fucking Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. probably one of the new ones. I don't know yet. I mean, I, I'm putting together more of the back end stuff, but I think, um, I think we got to build like the, ch the actual chat room frenzy game thing that we got that Noah's, no, Noah, <laughs> fucking God, he, he moved in with a woman. He launched his game. He went back to school and he's in the LCL program. So those are four major things. And plus there's he's got to finish the software for the chat rooms, the back end that he said was supposed to be finished three weeks ago. Sure. And um, he's got no time. Hmm. I got no money to hire uh, another programmer who works for as, as little as he does. Nothing. Mm. Uh oh. So we need to find a programmer. What What about that um, person that you were going to get that was a computer wiz, but they didn't have a computer? I don't know. She disappeared. I think she, she just called me out of the blue for thinking I was somebody else. And it's like an anime character. Anime? Yeah, her voice. It's, she sounded like an anime character. Oh, that's cool. I want to sound like an anime character. Yeah, well, you kind of do, but not like her. Oh, no, she no, she was. I'd never, I'd never heard communication patterns like hers. Very interesting. Hmm, that's really cool. And she might like. She might have been a computer genius. I don't know, but she. Uh, the next step was for, to see you. And that never happened. Yeah, she never got back to me. I mean, there aren't many people who probably just walk along normal life, meet somebody, and then they're being asked to be part of a very secret plan. And if they Google my name, you know, I remember just... my friend Ryan said that you put like a a piece of paper that was like Captain Sweet, very secret plan kind of business card on his windshield wiper one day in Vancouver. And he like sure. got back to his car and he found it. And he was like, what's this all about? 
I don't remember doing that. Huh? I don't remember doing that. Well, I don't know. We found it. That's fine. <laughs> Someone did it. Did you know what? At, at, at uh, Shambhala, I put a no big notice up saying, Captain Sweep looking for pirates. I didn't think anyone would show up, so I, I, I didn't show up. And there uh -huh. was like 60 people there. Really? And then I didn't show up. And then... <laughs> Like it was, it's the first, the only time that I've ever had a big call out and had anyone respond and I didn't go. Brutal. You're just getting in your own way. Why didn't you go? I, I honestly thought no one would show. And I think I was doing something else that was kind of fun. Might, might have even forgot about it. <laughs> I was on a lot of drugs. <laughs> I miss Shambhala. Shambhala. Oh, there was another. I had a quest cavern i had this i had a really big parcel of land in the middle of that forest and then they opened it up and i never participated it was like every two three minutes there was 12 people coming in I thought, what's the quest cavern? what's cool and i had to keep giving these quests out give these quests out and i probably did about 500 people That's in, so fun. And, and then like the quest was hung 100 people kissed 10 people like it was all 20 quests that were kind of like do something strange or do something more more connected or more something. That's so cute. That was a lot of fun. Ah, what a good idea. And then I had all my maps up, but they never <laughs> they never came. It's, it's just like I've done something close to what I was trying to do, but never having all the pieces. So I was I was uh, yeah. Hmm. I need a building. There's one way to, about the studio. One, what's that? Look, I mean, they're renovating and renting out a bunch of rooms at the studio. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I thought about getting the whole thing. Um, Too late now. Yeah. But that's, I need a place like that. Mm -hmm. and that, that I mean, if something opens up, I mean, that might be really perfect because I mean, Laura is there. Diana is linked in there a lot. And a lot of people that are like interested in a part of the plan in some kind of way would be in that environment already. Sure. I mean, I think, I mean, best case scenario was there was a synergizer in that spot and you and uh, Diana hosted, you know, and every week, every week people could come for a synergizer or whatever. Mm -hmm. It'd be like if you, if you do like eight of them and you have the same people doing each week, those people at the end of that time really know each other. Like it really, something happens when you sit around these tables. I, 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 I'd be, it used to have groups that would come like for six or 10 weeks or something, the same people. I think that, what is it? So I was talking to my friend, I, I got this big burst of like trying to make sustainable income last week because I got cut up the CERB and now I have no money coming in. And I was talking to my friend about how I wanted to do kind of like communication workshops, creating more authentic communications with people that kind of got us, like not us, but like adults out of their shell into more of a childlike manner where they could be goofy and they could be silly and they could be weird and they could express themselves fully in a space that it's okay to do so and to just bring people out of their shell. Um, and I, my friend was telling me about people in office jobs that need trust building exercises. Like, um, and so they, they have those kind of days where they have people come in and they do those little courses so people can get to know each other better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was thinking about that. Really? Yeah. And even with what you're saying to bring a synergizer in, I mean, you already kind of got the tools. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think what? there was, I mean, I, I still think of you and Kyle, you know, and, and uh, Raven, she didn't make it, but were the ones I wanted to be sort of like, uh, sort of like the other facilitators, right? Mm -hmm. Where whether with kids or with, with other people. I mean, both you and Kyle, I think are really good with kids. Mm -hmm. And you know, as a team, I think we need to work as a team because I think on our own, we all kind of flounder. I, I need team more than ever. And I need, I need strong, like unconditional love, like community kind of team 
not like you you relapsed or you're not good or like I don't like that thing you did in the car yesterday like I, I'm just I and that's another reason I want to leave Victoria is because I really realized that a lot of the connections I was making here felt really shallow and they didn't feel like anyone kind of had my back and I really miss that feeling of like you know I know the people that have my back and I realized that a lot of the people that I've met in the last I guess year or two that I feel like I really have my back are people that I had met through you. Really? Yeah, like I know that if I if I you know if Kyle's online or he's not like out in the boonies in his cap and like I'm like hey Kyle like I got arrested and I need someone to pick me up from jail, he would like stop everything and put on like a little jo Joker hat and be like I have a mission to do today or you know like I like, I can call Lindsay when I had to go get my driving driving test it was in Nanaimo and I had no ride to Nanaimo and Lindsay was like. And I paid her 60 bucks in gas, but she was like, I know how important this is to you. And I want you to have that freedom and I want you to have your full license. So I will drive you down. Wow. And it's like, you know, I would, I would do the same for both of them. So like that. And I just, that feeling of like, you know, they support me and want me to succeed. And yeah, that's something that I really appreciate. No, they're, they're, they're both stellar people. I mean, I, I have the highest admiration for the people I do hang with. Like I hang with them because I, I, I think they're very impressive people, you know, but a lot of times they're the people that the rest of the people don't quite connect with, or maybe they do in a certain way, but not fully kind of thing. And I see why it's just like, there's an intensity, right? Of the emotional side, there's an intensity of life and you just do things different, right? So <laughs> different. And it's really hard. It's really hard. <laughs> I, you know, I think, you know, in terms of service to children and, and sort of showing up, I think it'd be great. I think any situation where there's a structure and it was something that you wanted to do, I think you'd do really well. That's the thing. Cause I, I want purpose and I, I like to help people and I, I like working and I like having, I, I like doing that. Like I like being out there and I like being around people, but just not if it's not what I enjoy because at the end of the day, I'm putting so much energy out and, you know, I'll show up and I'll do a good job. And, you know, I will be like, wow, that was great. Thank you. But then I'll just go home and cry. Yeah. I mean, I, I really, I'm not sure what, I, I feel like I got to do what I'm doing right now and it's really, and I'm doing it, which I never have before. And so that's why I, I haven't been sort of on the road, but I feel like by the time, I get on the road. Well, maybe, I don't know, maybe you might want to show up with Diana and maybe Kyle too uh, at the house because Chinoa is going away for a couple weeks to Nelson. I can have the house, I can have the house to myself for a couple weeks. <clears throat> and so I already told Diana if she wanted some training that that would be the time to do it. <clears throat> so, I mean, it could be, could be training time. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love traveling around Vancouver with Day. And it'd be really nice to spend more time with Kyle. I think that'd be that'd be a really funny, silly, silly group. I think it'd be really good. Yeah. So maybe uh, talk to her about that, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe talk to Kyle about that. And uh, have you talked to them about it? <laughs> no, he's he's not talking to me. He's he's uh, either he's getting revenge for me cutting him off, or he's just pretty shitty at communicating anyway. I think he's just shitty at communicating. Yeah. Have you talked to Diana about it? You I, 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 all I, she said she put interest towards wanting to get training and I just told her about the time slot. So she knows, I mean, if you talk to her, she knows what, what we would be talking about. Okay. I'm probably going to see her pretty soon in person too. I like communicating with her in person because usually if we talk on text, I don't answer for like a month or she doesn't answer for a month. Uh, and then we see her a little bit <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, but I'll be in Duncan in the next couple of days, and Nigel's place is right by day, so maybe we can pop in and have a visit. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go. This okay. is a lovely long yeah. chat. Yeah. Nice to catch yeah. up. Great to see you. Nice to see you. And, Bye. And, uh, give my love to everybody. Yeah, I and, will. And hopefully see you soon. Yeah, have fun meditating, watching TikToks. Okay. <laughs>